So a uh, Kaplaner waveguide resonator is essentially this structure here. So everything that is blue is a conductor, and everything is, that is white is then etched away and uh, is not a conductor. So this structure is performed with uh, the lithography uh, on silicon, and uh, what we get is uh, this, this uh, if we bond wires to here, to this contact pad, and then to uh, this contact pad, then we can transmit microwaves. And this works like a uh, transmission line, so it has an impedance, which is determined by the ratio of this gap width and the conductor width. And uh, if we put a resonator here, so this is also a piece of transmission line, also plan a waveguide. And uh, but uh, instead of uh, having contact pads, it's terminated with a short circuit here and with an open circuit there. This acts as a uh, electromagnetic resonator. So um, the microwaves that come from this contact pad and go through. Uh, if their frequency is, is the frequency, the resonant frequency of this resonator, and then get reflected. And uh, you see uh, on the transmission amplitude, uh, you have a resonant peak. And uh, the resonance frequency of this uh, resonator is determined by its length. So this is a quarter wavelength resonator, uh, which is approximately 5 millimeters long. And on silicon, that is approximately 6 gigahertz. But the quality factor or the line width of this resonator, you cannot calculate so easily. It depends on the coupling strength between this uh, transmission line and uh, this resonator. And uh, for that, we actually have this online tool. So first of all, you need to define the coupler strength. Uh, the this coupler geometry and for that we just reload it uh, to begin from scratch so uh, this is a usual planar waveguide and uh, the dimensions we have here uh, the dimensions of this waveguide are 14 microns uh, the, the conductor width and 8 microns the gap width so uh, we write here this AB, uh, this is this point here, uh, this line, okay, and B is here, this one. So AB is 4, oh no, it's 8, and BC is uh, this here, and it's 14, CD is also 8. So uh, the permittivity of silicon is something like 11.75 and we get a characteristic impedance of this transmission line of about 49.59 ohms. Okay, uh, so uh, for that you don't really need this online tool and uh, uh, this is, can be done quite easily with simple formulas. Uh, the interesting part is here. So uh, we have still the same planar waveguide transmission line, but now we have a second transmission line next to it and a piece of ground uh, in between. So we add two conductors here, this uh, button, and uh, the width of these uh, conductors uh, is 5 microns, 4 microns, 7 microns, and again 4 microns. So that's what we write here. 5, 4, 7, 4, and this is this cross section. So this is one conductor. The blue conductor is the feed line. The resonator is here the yellow conductor. And uh, now we need to, uh, we have uh, the uh, capacitance and inductance matrices. So the per unit length effective inductance and capacitance matrices, assuming that this is conductor one or feed line conductor and this is the resonator conductor. Okay, and uh, we have also these impedances and the mode coupling strength between the two conductors, which is uh, 
the same for capacitive and inductive coupling because of the uh, symmetry of um, the planar structures. So um, what we need to do next is to uh, write the uh, to input the lengths of uh, the sections. So the coupler section, this is the coupler section, it's about 400 microns in length. So we have arcs here. Uh, there's no good way of describing whether this is a coupler section or not. So they're still coupled to the mm, planar waveguide transmission line, to the feed line, but the coupling strength is less. So we just, uh, for now, we assume that uh, the coupling, uh, the main part of the coupling is due to these 400 microns. And uh, the rest of this waveguide is then, this section is uh, 1004 microns, so one millimeter, and uh, it ends with an open circuit. So we write here, uh, the coupler section is 0.4 millimeters, which is correct. L1 uh, is one millimeter. So you can write these four microns, not that they change a lot, but still. And uh, the termination, so you can see on this um, scheme here, so this is this section L1, this here, and the termination uh, is open, so we need to flag open here. On the other side um, of this uh, waveguide, I don't know how long it is, but let's assume it's uh, 3.6 and then it's about 5 millimeters altogether. And uh, we have a short circuit here, so we flag this. Okay, and uh, that's about it. Uh, we can write down the impedances of uh, the input and the output port. So this is then the output port because it's next to, uh, so it's on the right, so on this side of the coupler because this is Z ZT1 and this makes uh, that port the input port and uh, we'll write down the impedance as 50 ohms and uh, then we get the resonance frequency here which is approximately 6 gigahertz as we thought and then we have the line width which is 0.43 megahertz and the quality factor is about 30,000. Okay so this is it and uh, let me show you how this depends on impedance so imagine that this port is not connected to anything or uh, yeah it has an impedance of infinity so it's basically an open circuit as well and uh, we can't write infinity here we can write something large and in that case the quality factor becomes uh, smaller so the line width becomes larger and this happens because the, the uh, coupling here is mostly capacitive since this end, the open end, is, more, is nearer to the um, a coupler section than the shorted end. And uh, because this becomes a voltage antinode, capacitive coupling becomes stronger. And uh, if we make this impedance zero, which corresponds to a short circuit here, in that case, we get a quality factor that is larger, so uh, the in only the inductive coupling is strong here. Okay, so uh, this is almost it, and if you're interested in how this works, you can uh, visit this um, uh, archive paper, and we'll have a peer-reviewed uh, uh, paper soon in EPJ Quantum Technology. And you can have a look at the JavaScript behind it, or if you like Python, there's also a Python implementation. It's a bit slower, but it still works, and uh, um, that's it. Thank you for your attention.